There is two endangered species here. The big bird is endangered species, very endangered, endangered species. Mahat Laith is an animal rights activist in Iraq. Every Friday morning, he comes to this animal selling market in Baghdad to spot animals that are not supposed to be sold here. Endangered and vulnerable species. Where are you? 85,000 dinar. Illegal hunting and illegal, illegal selling. Can you see inside? There are four, four inside. Endangered species. These birds are victims of poaching. They're now kept in harsh conditions, waiting to be sold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buying and keeping position of these birds has become very popular among Iraqis. National laws prohibit hunting and treating of this species, but it remains very easy to get your hands on these animals in the markets. Police, they can, they can go and come back and see what happening here in this market, and they see the, the, the species and the endangered species here and the wild animals here, but they, they don't do anything, they don't talk about these things, they don't stop the hunters because even they don't know about the law. As, a, as an activist, I talk with these uh, sellers and the hunters here. Sometimes I get like, uh, it, it's make like arguing between us and it's so dangerous for me. No official figures exist on exactly how extensive wildlife trafficking is in Iraq. However, without effective control from the authorities, poachers and traffickers are not facing any obstacles, nor do they have to be creative in evading checks, except sometimes when it comes to importing or exporting these animals across national borders. At the Baghdad International Airport, some of these wild animals are sometimes intercepted. For example, last December, 13 falcons appeared on this control screen, tied up in a suitcase. The traffickers had wrapped the birds in cellophane, then hid them in a bag, injecting them with an anesthetic so that they'd be silent and wouldn't move. We spotted them on the screen during the bag search. Here are the photos of these animals provided by the customs agents. The smuggler was an Iraqi and he planned to sell them in Dubai, according to these authorities. On the black market, the price of the birds could reach several tens of thousands of euros. Traffickers do it for the money or for fun. The goal is just to hunt. Iraq did take steps in trying to curb these trafficking activities. In 2014, for example, the country ratified the Washington Convention, an international tax that regulates the trade in endangered species. According to the convention, sellers and buyers are required to obtain a certificate that proves the treating of the animal will not harm the survival of the species. With official backing, zoos or veterinary clinics can easily obtain such permits. However, the problem also comes from them. In Iraq, these establishments are also authorized to resell these animals to individuals, oftentimes without any questions asked. It has therefore made tracking these animals extremely difficult, if not impossible. We arranged a meeting with a veterinary clinic in Baghdad, saying that we wanted to buy a small tiger or a lion and we went with a hidden camera. For about 4,000 euros, we could buy a white lion, a species now threatened with extinction. Nobody asked us the reason why we wanted to buy this animal. They didn't even ask for our IDs. As a result, just like many other countries in the Middle East, more and more people are buying themselves these exotic animals in Iraq, and social media stars also join the rank. But some are using this relatively painless and easy process for more dismal activities. An Iraqi veterinarian witnessed an incident directly and agreed to tell us the story on condition of anonymity. Uh, in the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, there is someone called me uh, that uh, there is a uh, bad circumstances of the lion in some place in Baghdad. They may maybe have uh, 100 uh, uh, animals uh, from different species and different breed uh, in the wild right way. And the, the worker told me, uh, and sometimes they took the animals and just shoot him under his uh, leg just to uh, jumping or to running and they start to laugh, to laugh, to laugh. We asked him why he didn't call the police. Uh, this lion related to a big, uh, big man in the government. He know that someone uh, went to this place and the worker uh, told him my name and the place of my work. So there is another one 
uh, call me and threat my life. If I told my the story of the lion, there's everything on my life and my life of my family. From entertainment to pure show off, and from these animals being tortured to them being resold, everything seems possible in Iraq. Despite the existing laws to protect endangered species, the lack of effective enforcement has allowed owners and traffickers to continue with these activities.